Welcome. Happy Christmas to everyone. Christmas Eve is a night of joyful celebration, a night of shout and uh, uh, sing the coming of Jesus. I am humbled to share, stand here to welcome each and every one of you to this year's Christmas Eve service. It is a very important date in the life of our church and it is part of our Christian tradition to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the incarnate Son of God. Around 700 years before the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, the Old Testament prophet Isaiah declared these words. Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 and 6 to 7. The people walking in the darkness have seen a great light. A light has dawned on those living in the land of darkness. Verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and the peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from the time on and forever. The seal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of God from the prophet Isaiah. Let's pray and start our service today. God, our Heavenly Father, help us to hear the good news today. Just like the first century shepherds, to you is born this day a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. Help us to glorify and praise you for all that you have seen and heard. Jesus Christ is born to set us free, born to give us life, born as a true gift. Lord of mercy, light, hope, love, peace and joy, shine in our darkness and repair our world and its brokenness. Please help us. We come into service into your hand, ask your Father to uh, help and bless each and every one of us. Especially we pray for those who are not able to make it to the church and uh, due to different reasons. We ask your Father that wherever they are, uh, help them to experience your presence in a very special way. Your heavenly touch in a very special way. Give you the glory and honor, give you thanks and praises. In Jesus' precious name we offer this prayer. Amen and Amen. Please enjoy the service. On this most holy day, we light all four candles in our Advent wreath. We are reminded of the expectation, preparation, proclamation, and revelation of His coming. Now, we light the Christ candle. We rejoice that the promise of God has been fulfilled in the coming of the baby born in a manger. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and mighty King, we celebrate your goodness to us as we join the triumph and the joy of Christmas. As your love has been revealed in all of its fullness, we pray that love may abound in our hearts during this special day. Grant us the Spirit of Christ so we may live in the fullness of his character every day. In his name we pray. Amen.
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Hello, everyone. I was just practicing my favorite Christmas song and wrapping up this gift for Jesus. Because, as you know, today is Christmas Eve, and that makes tomorrow Christmas. That's right. So tomorrow is Jesus' birthday. And we love to celebrate his birthday, don't we? We love to give each other gifts. We love to decorate the house inside and outside. And I think people are just extra nice around this time of year and all because it's Jesus's birthday. But did you know there are some people who celebrate his birthday but don't know who Jesus is? Oh, so. I was thinking about a gift that I could maybe give to Jesus. And one of those might be just a prayer of thanksgiving or just being extra kind to others. But then I thought the greatest gift that I could give is to tell someone else about him, to tell others about Jesus' love and how he came to earth to save us from our sins so that we could live in heaven with God forever. I hope that you guys also will give Jesus that gift on his birthday. I also hope that you all have a great time celebrating Christmas. And please remember to celebrate with Jesus too, because after all, it is his birthday. Will you guys pray with me about that? Thank you so much. You can bow your heads and repeat after me as we pray. Dear God, we thank you for sending Jesus to earth so that we can live in heaven with you. Forgive us when we forget whose birthday it is. Help us to share him and his love with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a very Merry Christmas. His name is Jesus, which means the Lord saves, because he will save his people from their sins.
congregational video, there are some people I want to point out who were present at Jesus' birth. The shepherds, the wise men, the innkeeper, Herod, Joseph, Mary, angels, and God himself. I've asked some folks to talk about one of these that maybe they admire, um, identify with, or would like to ask some questions of. Who do you think you would select? Think about it and have a great week. Shepherds, why were they chosen to be notified of the birth of Jesus? One idea is that they were considered the lowest of low, and thus by including them, it was a symbol of how Jesus was sent here for all. Another idea that I've thought about is that they were the local spreader of news. Because of the wandering of the flocks of sheep they watched as they foraged for food, the shepherds would be in many locations and would tell of things that they had seen or learned about in one area to other areas and also other shepherds. And thus they were perfect for spreading the news of the birth of God's son throughout the population. And what a genius plan God used to get that done. According to our scriptures, you shepherds play a large part in finding the baby Jesus. I have a couple of questions for you. What in the world did you think when a, an angel came to you and talked to you and then they say a heavenly host came? But didn't that just terrify you all? And then according to the scriptures, you left the sheep and took off. Why would you leave the sheep all alone? I, I don't know, what, what about the wild animals that might come? And then you went and found the baby. Did you really believe that that was the Son of God? I know you were told that, but how did you believe that? I know you saw a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, and yet it's just a baby. So how could you believe that this is the Son of God? But you did, and the rest of us need to believe that same thing. This is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Thank God for him. Hello again. I've put myself in this video because I'm intrigued by the singing of the heavenly hosts, singing glory to God in the highest. I have a lot of questions. What did it feel like to sing with a heavenly host? Um, did you have perfect pitch? Did people, they sing in ho in uh, parts, tenor, alto, bass, soprano? Did they have a director? Were there musical instruments involved? Um, just so many questions I can't even begin to, to imagine, except I'd love to know what the feeling was like to sing in such a group. Think about it. 
Have a great week. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who has pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests.
When the angels had left him and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which was just as they had been told.
Welcome home, the gift of Christmas. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. Merry Christmas to everyone. I believe it is the best time of the year. There is no other holy day quite like it. It is filled with stories, memories, music, parties, lights, clothes, shopping, gift, dinner, smell of the evergreen pine Christmas trees, the reuniting of the families. But most importantly, Christmas has to do with a baby born in Bethlehem. We cannot throw the baby out with the bathwater. Tonight, I wanted to talk about the baby Jesus born in Bethlehem, the gift of Christmas, the gift to mankind. Welcome home. The day of the birth of the, the child at Bethlehem is the most important day ever recorded or ever will take place in human history. Before I moved to Peoria, I lived in Dayton, Ohio for a few years. Dayton was historically known for making the impossible possible or where dreams take flight by the Wright brothers. Most people thought a flying machine would never work and it is impossible to break away from the Earth's gravitational force. Some believe not within a thousand years man will man ever fly. The Wright brothers did not go to college. They were working initially in their own Wright bicycle shop. Yet they were curious kids. On December 17, 1907, Wilbur and Oral Wright did the impossible and made it possible. It is said that the, right after their triumphant flight, the excited brothers cabled their only sister, Catherine, with the happy and historic news, ecstatic, she raced to the hometown newspaper office in Dayton, Ohio, and uh, breathlessly uh, thrust uh, the telegram with the editors uh, into the editor's hand. It read, "Have actually flown 120 feet. Will be home at Christmas." Wilbur and Orwell. Handing the paper back to with uh, a smile, the editor said, Is the, Isn't that nice? The boys will be home for Christmas. The news editor has missed the point completely. Instead of focusing on the one part of the message the brothers uh, were trying to convey, uh, he only saw the part where they are coming home on Christmas holidays. That same scenario is played out every year during the Christmas season. People are caught up in the festivities, but they miss the truth of Christmas. Some are even politically correct. They don't even mention the word Christmas or Christ. They say happy holidays and I'm sure those who are in the church tonight don't even mind a little bit of religion, a bit of truth. And I'm sure it doesn't make anyone uncomfortable. Even if it makes some comfortable story, I cannot help it. As we gather as a community of faith, we know there is a lot of darkness in our world. Yet we gather as a hopeful people every day of our lives. We receive bad news, uh, famine, poverty, natural calamities, war, economic uncertainty, crime, now a global pandemic. The bad news is everywhere. But God has uh, come to our rescue with the good news. Sometimes religion has taken the good news and made it complex. If we learn anything in this year, it is one thing for sure that nothing we can take it for granted. Not even as a community, uh, a small community gathering together uh, and, you know, to celebrate the birth of Christ. Around 700 years before Jesus was born, Isaiah the prophet declared, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those uh, living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. First of all, Jesus is a gift, you and, uh, gift for you and me. 
The Bible says to us, uh, for us a gift is given. Now, not what uh, you and I will find under the Christmas tree. Over 40 times in the New Testament, the, 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 uh, Jesus, the Messiah, is referred as the gift to mankind. Jesus Christ is the greatest gift ever given to mankind. The biblical scholars, the Holy Catholic Church in the world, Universal Church, trying to put words to this gift and explain and try to explain it for the last two millennia. St. John's own word says, The word become flesh and dwelt among us. The Logos incarnate. It's a Greek understanding where the world exists based on a, or a standing on a Logos. A reasoning capacity, a reasoning power. He continued to say, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Jesus is the reason for the season. Secondly, the government will be on His shoulders. Isaiah says, Jesus comes to lift all our burdens because all the government will be on His shoulders. Our current political system tried to dump the, the burden on the people, taxing them just like the first century Roman imperialism. Jesus' government will be, uh, will be the one that takes your burden away. It is uh, talking about the eternal king and eternal kingdom. The king of kings, the lord of lords. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 10 and 11 apostle, uh, Paul says that uh, at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth, under the earth. That simply means everyone who is born and who will be born, men, women, children, every girl, everyone, every king and every uh, follower, every leader, every powerful one in our world will bow before this king and acknowledge his kingdom and his lordship. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 4 says, For he will break the yoke of slavery, lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. I don't know what kind of burden you carry today, how you face the heavy uh, law on your shoulder. But let me tell you a good news. Unlike the worldly leaders or the powerful Christ come so that your burden he will take away. The Bible says, cast all your burden on him because he cares for you. Just throw it on him and let him carry your burden. Jesus said, we uh, can cast all our burdens on him. He is a burden carrying, carrying God. He comes to meet all, all our needs. God's perfect gift is a government that will carry our burden. Prophet Isaiah continued to say, He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, or Prince of Peace. He hear the term Wonderful Counselor refers not an advisor or an empathetic listener, rather the embodiment of wisdom. He is the logos behind. He is the reason behind our own existence. He is a mighty God, one who comes to rescue. He is the champion. He will never be defeated. He is a victorious king. He is the everlasting father. Throughout the Bible, we see the fatherhood of God the Father. But here it refers to Jesus, the second person of Trinity, as the everlasting father. It is the character of Jesus as a provider wider, protector, mighty warrior, the tender, compassionate, full of wisdom, who redeem and adopt sinners like me into the family of God that makes me the everlasting, make him the everlasting father. He is the prince of peace, the prince of shalom. It is not the absence of conflict. It is not Pax Romana, while the Roman offer peace after a war. It is not, the, it is the presence of peace. God is not the absence of anything. But he is the presence of everything. He is the Prince of Peace. If anyone in Christ, they will be a new creation. The metamorphosis takes place. The transformation takes place. About this peace, Paul says, Be anxious about nothing. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out? Burned out? Are, you, are, you, are you feeling uh, helpless? Let me tell you, my friends, 
you can enter into the unforced rhythm of grace and peace this gift is the full of unfailing love and fullness he is the everlasting father he is a father to his children tender and compassionate to those who fear him for he knows how weak we are he remembers we are only dust as the psalmist says in 103 jesus comes to this world so that you and i can have peace yes you and i can have a light we don't need to struggle in our darkness the prophet declares and predicate the new testament present the old testament cried out someone is coming the new testament declares someone has come that someone is the baby of bethlehem the jesus christ our savior in the old testament we hear the voice of longing but in the new testament we see the realization in the old testament we see the creator god in the new testament we see god the redeemer we see the majestic god in the old testament in the new testament we see our heavenly father we see a spiritual darkness the power of sin in the old testament and in the new testament we see the rising sun the light that, that defeat the dark in the old testament we see the curse of sin and the new testament we see sin's remedy in one place we see the bondage and law in other place we see the liberty and gospel in one place we see a uh, shadow but in other place we see the substance the god become a human being taken the human form we see uh, the outward ceremonies in the old testament but today we have an info inward experience and inward transformation one place we have the shadow on the other hand we have the substance in one place we have the prophecy and on the other side we have the fulfillment at one place we see the expected messiah and waiting and longing and on the other side we see the paradise regained on the other side we have a savior and a, and a kingdom established after 400 years of silence christ yeshua the messiah the baby born in bethlehem is the bond is the bridge between two testament a mighty caesar augustus issued a decree that the entire roman world need to be present in their own hometown to register and take a census joseph the adoptive father and jesus christ along with the surrogate mother of jesus christ traveled to the town of nazareth in galilee to judea to bethlehem the town of david the king he belonged to the house and the line of David according to the prophet declaration it was coming home journey come home the gift of Christmas is waiting for you you don't need to be uh, worried and uh, struggling outside even though we don't have Joseph's own testimony in our Bible of the Savior in our own thinking and imagination I can say he was the resemblance of obedience mercy kindness and of the most remarkable man ever lived Joseph the carpenter Paul when he talks to the church in Rome about the same story he said I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes first to the Jew then to the Greek someone uh, sometimes we forget and neglect the hope and the promise and the joy in the one who was born into this world of pain with a message of love message of hope message Message of peace and joy let the story speak to you tonight it is uh, the it is the work it is it is for work that God sent you and uh, sent Jesus Christ it is not about uh, rules and regulation it is about uh, it is about relationship we know the rules with our re relationship leads to rebellion I know we still feel upside down we start slowly accepting the disruption confusion and uncertainty and the new normal is going to stay forever seems like but let me tell you uh, tell you there is hope for you and hope for me that hope is Jesus Christ the Messiah the child who is born in Bethlehem for to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting 
Father, the Prince of God, Prince of Peace, the Mighty God with us is uh, contained not only uh, in birth but also in suffering, death, and resurrection. A child has been born for us, whose name is called Wonderful Counselor, a Good Shepherd, a Deliverer, Lamb of God, the Word, the Mighty God, the First and the Last, the Author of Life, Morning Star, the Light, Everlasting Father, the Bread of Life resurrection and life the light of the world the wine the prince of peace chief cornerstone the lord of lords the king of kings the way he is the emmanuel god with us i believe that as you celebrate this birthday let christ be born in your heart today if you don't have that experience please pray that prayer god come into my heart i am in need of you more than ever please pray with me Jesus, our Messiah, Savior, Shepherd, the King, you are my Savior, my Lord, and my uh, everything. You are the great news. You are the good news. And you have come into this world for everything I've done wrong. Come into my heart today and please help me. Please accept me as your child and uh, as your son and daughters, as your, uh, as your beloved, oh God. Please, God, take me in, oh Father, and uh, come into my heart fill my heart take out all the vacuum all the heavy lead and all the power and pressures take it out of me oh God Jesus because you have come so that I may have peace joy prosperity blessing you may replace it with abundance of God you have come that I may have life and life in abundance help me oh Jesus I pray for everyone who listened to my word today every every word they every every scripture every song they listen to today Oh Father, I ask you, oh Father, that you touch them. You touch them with a great um, uh, anointing, great blessing, oh Father, that you may bring them, that we all come back home, come where we have, a, we know that we have a space with you and in you. We give all the glory and honor, give you thanks and praises. In Jesus' precious name, we offer this prayer. Amen and amen. May God bless you and have a Merry Christmas.
receive this benediction go sing the song of your salvation glory to god in the highest heaven and on earth peace jesus christ was born today may the light of christ lead you today and every day may the love of the father grace of our lord jesus christ fellowship and the communion of the holy spirit be with you today and every day Amen and Amen.